The people who run Japan's only online nuclear power plant say there's no active earthquake fault under the facility. But members of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority say they'll conduct their own survey on Friday. They'll then decide whether to order a shutdown of the plant. Officials of Kansai Electric Park Company on Wednesday submitted to the NRA an interim report on the underground seam at the OE nuclear plant. The report said the fissure that runs about 900 meters between the plant's number two and number three reactors is not an active fault. The report said the fissure that runs about 900 meters between the plant's number two and number three reactors is not an active fault. The utility reported the same conclusion before the March disaster last year. The finding was approved by the government at the time. Government guidelines prohibit the building of important facilities of nuclear power plants above active faults. The head of the NRA previously indicated his agency would order shutting down the OE plant if the scene was found to be an active fault. <laughs> Sometimes just think funny things. Experts spent the day digging in the dirt around Japan's only operating nuclear plant to assess its vulnerability to earthquakes. The Nuclear Regulation Authority is trying to figure out if a seam under the OE facility is an active fault. Representatives say they could ask operator Kansai Electric Power Company to suspend operations depending on their findings. Agency member Kunihiko Shimazaki and four other outside experts visited the plant Friday. It sits on the Sea of Japan coast in Fukui Prefecture. The day started with a briefing from Kansai Electric workers about what they found in their own survey. The underground fissure is nearly a kilometer long. A key pipeline that transports cooling water from the ocean to the reactors runs across the seam. The underground fissure is nearly a kilometer long. A key pipeline that transports cooling water from the ocean to the reactors runs across the seam. The team took samples from under the northern part of the OE plant's premises. They also examined soil laters taken from the ground in and around the fissure to check hardness and other properties. <laughs> There are many things you can only find out by coming to the site. We may have to redo the survey if necessary. Nuclear plant operators in Japan are not allowed to build reactors or other infrastructure crucial for the safe operation of their facilities directly above active faults. No shit. A former worker at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has filed a criminal complaint against a subcontractor. He says the company knowingly instructed him to work in a dangerously contaminated area. The 46-year-old whistleblower worked at the crippled nuclear plant in March and April last year. He said he and five others were instructed on March 24th to lay cable in the basement of the number three reactor and turbine building. He says radiation in the basement was extremely high at 400 millisieverts an hour. He also says that workers employed by Tokyo Electric Power Company evacuated. However, the subcontractor, Kandenko, told him to stay. He refused the order and moved to work on the first floor where radiation was about 11 millisieverts per hour. Workers will risk their lives unless labor rules covering dangerous jobs are respected. I hope companies will follow the safety rules designed to protect workers. Kandenko claims it was unaware of the high radiation levels until it was informed by TEPCO after the work was completed. TEPCO has declined to comment on the case, saying it does not know details of the complaint. A year and a half after a massive earthquake and subsequent tsunami left the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan severely damaged, the plant's authorities are still scrambling to find space to store the tens of thousands of tons of highly contaminated water that was used to cool the broken reactors. And the problem is far from contained. 
The water is stored in gigantic tanks surrounding the Daiichi power plant. And TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, has been working to clear more room for a volume of water that's expected to more than triple in the next three years. Finding a place to store over 200,000 tons of radioactive water is no easy task, especially with the added factor that Japan is an island nation highly susceptible to earthquakes and tsunamis. And if the situation in Japan isn't daunting enough, it becomes more complicated when you throw in the fact that nuclear authorities are get entangled with the Yakuza, Japan's most notorious crime syndicate. That's right. According to Japanese government sources, the Yakuza has a long history of involvement in Japan's nuclear industry that dates back over a decade. Undercover reporters have exposed TEPCO payoffs to the Yakuza to keep quiet about safety issues and potential scandals. Look, we already know that TEPCO is corrupt as hell. In fact, they knew that the reactors were faulty, and they even falsified documents in the past to downplay the poor conditions of the reactors years before the disaster. So, who is TEPCO having work on the disaster cleanup? Well, unfortunately, a group of veteran engineers called the Skilled Veterans Corps for Fukushima has been denied access to clean up the radioactive mess. The Skilled Veterans Corps is made up of 700 plus retired workers from the Fukushima plant. Many of them elders who expect to die of natural causes long before the long-term effects of radiation exposure could make them sick. Aside from the fact that these men are willing to lay down their lives for the cleanup effort, I find it mind-boggling to believe that TEPCO is denying them access. It starts to make sense, however, when you take into account the outsourcing of organized crime labor by TEPCO. The arrest of a Yakuza boss who allegedly supplied workers for reconstruction efforts is helping shine a light on the whole operation. Japanese law enforcement officials have disclosed that starting in May of last year, Gang members were sent to the damaged reactors, where they performed cleanup work and began rebuilding damaged areas. A subcontractor for TEPCO then awarded the extra hazard pay to the crime boss, and a portion of the money was used to settle debts with the crime syndicate. Now, while you might be thinking that gang members and criminals going in to help clean up a nuclear disaster sounds like a good idea, think about it this way. These workers are being sacrificed to do this job because they are indebted to the mob. They are desperate for work, and many of them have little to no experience being sent to what they're doing. Think about what I just said. This may be the most important aspect of all. A nuclear disaster resulting from three major nuclear meltdowns is unfolding by the minute, and who's sent to work on it? Gang members with no experience. The cleanup efforts must be worked on properly or could result in the spread of 85 times the amount of dangerous CS-137 isotope that the Chernobyl disaster sent around the world. Listen guys, this is insane. If the potential for a global catastrophe isn't opening people's eyes to the technological insanity that is nuclear energy, then I don't know what will. The idea of nuclear energy does not account for human error mother nature's wrath and the impossibility of storing the waste we clearly can't count on the industry or the government to look out for the people of this planet we are the ones who need to demand an end to this madness people in new york are watching their city and its surroundings slowly heal from the beating handed out by monster storm sandy Crews are draining flooded streets. Three major airports are now all offering limited service. And parts of the transit system are open and free for users for the next two days. Trains won't be stopping at a number of subway stations for some time, though. That includes the South Ferry Station at the southern tip of Manhattan. Water filled the tunnels there. And it's still covering tracks and platforms at the third basement level. Workers are trying to restore power to the station. I've been here 26 years working for New York City Transit. This, without a doubt, is probably the worst flood that we've had. It will take probably weeks just to pump the water out. New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo says the New York metropolitan region is dealing with a transportation emergency.
Above ground, the extent of the destruction is startling. The storm changed the map of the New Jersey coastline, destroying homes, boats, and tossing tons of sand inland. It also wrecked a popular amusement park. The swath of damage extends for several hundred kilometers. Officials say the state suffered many billions of dollars in losses. Experts have uh, come up with an estimate for how much it will cost to fix what Sandy broke. The storm damaged homes, businesses, transit, roads, and power infrastructures. Analysts with the U.S. research firm IHS Global Insight say the bill could swell to $50 billion. They argue this could cut U.S. economic growth for the October to December quarter by up to 0.4 percentage points in annual terms. Catastrophe risk forecasting firm Ekikat says the storm may cost the insurance industry up to $20 billion. That includes property damage and losses from halted businesses. The figure is lower than the $74 billion the insurance industry paid after Hurricane Katrina hit the southern part of the country in 2005. But it's nearly four times what insurers doled out when Hurricane Irene hit the U.S. East Coast in August last year. Bulgarian leaders want to hear from voters on how the country powers itself. They're holding a referendum at the end of January to ask whether the nation needs more nuclear plants. Bulgaria currently has one nuclear plant in operation. Workers began building a new facility four years ago to meet growing demand for electricity. But authorities suspended construction last March. They cited high costs as well as safety concerns triggered by last year's nuclear accident here in Japan. Government leaders have been trying to promote renewable energy with backing from foreign investors. Still, some people say Bulgaria needs more nuclear reactors to offset rising energy costs. You see, always the pro-nukes say, hey, but these are old reactors at Fukushima and generation three and four and five are going to be much safer. Why? Oh, well, they've got pumps that work without electricity by gravity and they've got this and they've got that. But it's still the same technology. You're still using fissile material, uranium-235, or you could use thorium-233, enriched in a reactor to boil water. And that produces as byproducts these actinides and transuranic elements that are highly radioactive and poisonous. And there's no way that we yet know of to, to, to isolate these from the biosphere for the necessary length of their lives. The Yanks have tried it. The Swedes have got fairly close, but they haven't succeeded yet. The French have tried it near Fessenheim, a reactor up on the border of Germany. They haven't done it yet. And I don't think they will, because even if you could bury this stuff, and plutonium has a half-life of 24,400 years, even if you could do that, what, how long do you have to wait before another generation says, oh, we need that, we need that material to build nuclear weapons? I mean, how far ahead can we look, ladies and gentlemen? I can't even look to the end of the Gillard government. Can we look 10 or 20 or 50 years ahead? Can we look a 1,000 years ahead? Forget it.